What is going on, wonderful people? It's Medicosis Perfect Schnellis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my pathology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about cell adaptations, cell injury, and cell death. We discussed atrophy, hypoplasia, hyperplasia, hypertrophy, metaplasia, dysplasia, and neoplasia. Neoplasia could be benign or malignant, i.e. cancers. We talked about cell injury, the causes of cell injury, such as hypoxia, and the different subtypes of hypoxia and the distinction between hypoxia and hypoxemia. We covered cell death, including apoptosis and its three mechanisms, as well as necrosis with its six subtypes. After which, we started covering inflammation and the inflammatory mediators. In previous videos, I helped you learn about interleukins, cytokines, histamine, bradykinin, and today it's time for prostaglandins, which have important functions in different body organs and systems including the eye, the uterus, and the stomach, and much more. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, because this helps me protect my stomach. This is my pathology playlist. Please watch these videos in order for maximum understanding and retention. Cytokines from kinetic upon the cell to put the cell into action or into motion. Cytokines are divided into interleukins, colony stimulating factors, and tumor necrosis factors. We also have inflammatory mediators such as histamine, such as bradykinin, such as serotonin, and prostaglandins. I've talked about all of these topics in previous videos. Today it's time to talk about prostaglandins. To understand prostaglandins, you need to understand the arachidonic acid pathway first. This is the arachidonic acid. Where does it come from? It is liberated from the phospholipids. Where are the phospholipids located? In your cell membrane, which is a lipid bilayer. If you wish to see more videos like this in the future, please drop a heart emoji in the comments. Your cell membrane, also known as plasma membrane, or cytoplasmic membrane is a lipid bilayer. Here's the first layer and the second layer. By layer. It is made of proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates. What kind of lipids? All kinds of lipids, such as phospholipids, cholesterol, and other lipids, for example, sphingolipids in nerve cells. To learn about sphingolipidoses, see my biochemistry playlist. Today we'll focus on phospholipids because phospholipids are the source of the arachidonic acid. Why do you call them phospholipids? Because they have a phosphate head and lipid tails. One head and two tails. Just like this, one head and two tails. Phosphate head, but the tails are made of fatty acids. The head is charged or ionized because phosphate carries a charge, a negative charge that is. I've taught you in my chemistry playlist that if the word ends in 8, odds are it is negatively charged, such as phosphate, sulfate, carbonate, and more. So, the phosphate head has a negative charge, and that's why it's water-soluble. However, the tails, fatty acids, are not charged, and that's why they are lipid-soluble. Hydrophilic head but hydrophobic tails. If half of you is water-soluble and the other half is lipid-soluble, then you are like an amphibian. You're amphipathic. What's an amphibian? It's an organism that can live on land and in sea. An organism with two faces, just like your amphipathic phospholipid. Let's talk about the different types of lipids. We have triglycerides, there is cholesterol, there are fatty acids, and the fat-soluble vitamins. Never ever forget that. Tell me more about the fatty acids. There are essential fatty acids and non-essential fatty acids. The essential fatty acids are omega-3 and omega-6. Omega-3 is known as alpha-linolenic acid, whereas omega-6 is linoleic acid. Please note that there is a second N in linolenic, omega-3, but there is no second N in linoleic, which is omega-6. So the mnemonic is just think of opposites. Omega-6, well, 6 is too much, so you better tone it down by making the word shorter. But omega-3 is too little, so you better make the word longer. Alpha linoleic. It is this omega-6 linoleic acid that gives us arachidonic acid. So let's go back to square one. You have a cell membrane, which is a lipid bilayer. We have phosphate head and fatty acid tails. The fatty acid tails could be many things, including this guy, omega-6. When the fatty acid is omega-6, this omega-6 can give us arachidonic acid. Tell me more about arachidonic acid. It's an omega-6 fatty acid, alright? Is it saturated or not? It is not saturated, it's unsaturated. 
what's the difference between saturated fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acids? All right, easy. When I say saturated, I mean saturated with hydrogens, meaning everything is a single bond. Why? This gives us the maximum number of hydrogens, in this case, four. One, two, three, and four. This is saturated with hydrogen and therefore saturated with single bonds. But what if I add a double bond? Oh, now this carbon can never bind for hydrogens. It can bind one and two. That's it. It cannot bind for hydrogen. So this carbon, thanks to the double bond, is unsaturated because it's not fully saturated with hydrogen and not fully saturated with the single bonds. How many double bonds do you have here? I see only one. So we're going to call this a mono unsaturated fatty acid. But what if we have more than one double bonds? Then it's going to be a poly unsaturated fatty acid. Why call it omega-6? Well, the Greek letter alpha is the beginning and omega is the end. So if you count from behind, if you count from the end of the fatty acid, one, two, three, four, five, the sixth carbon has a double bond. This is an omega-6 fatty acid. Got it? Okay. Now, what's the difference between essential fatty acid and non-essential fatty acid? Essential means that it's essential that you eat it and consume it in your diet. Why? Because your body cannot make it from scratch. So you better eat it. It is essential that you eat it. However, arachidonic acid is not an essential fatty acid. You do not need to eat it in your diet. Why not? Because your body can make it. How come? Your body can make it from phospholipids. Where are the phospholipids? In your cell membrane. And when it comes to cells, you have trillions of them. Now let's talk to phospholipase A2 enzyme. The enzyme says, I set the arachidonic acid free from the tyranny of the membrane phospholipids. I let the arachidonic acid lose to promote my agenda, my agenda of inflammation. However, corticosteroids or glucocorticoids can take me to the cleaners because corticosteroids inhibit phospholipase A2 and therefore corticosteroids inhibit the formation of arachidonic acid. And that's why corticosteroids are anti-inflammatory. Starting with the membrane phospholipids, we have phospholipase A2 enzyme, which is going to liberate the arachidonic acid from the tyranny of the membrane phospholipids. Then arachidonic acid, thank you, linoleic acid, can branch into two separate pathways. You can use the cyclooxygenase pathway or the lipooxygenase pathway. Arachidonic acid via cyclooxygenase is gonna give us prostaglandins, but via lipooxygenase, arachidonic acid will yield leukotrienes. Tell me more about the prostaglandins. We have many prostaglandins. There is prostaglandin G2, there is prostaglandin H2, there is prostaglandin I2, also known as prostacyclin, which keeps the blood cycling, meaning the blood will keep flowing, flowing, flowing without any clots. This is the exact opposite of thromboxane A2, which is pro-thrombosis. Thromboxane, pro-thrombosis. So thromboxane A2 wants you to clot, but prostaglandin I2 or prostacyclin wants you to not clot. Thromboxane A2 wants you to clot. How? By constricting the vessels and helping with plated aggregation. This makes you more likely to clot. And on a deep biochemical level, thromboxane E2 is responsible for Prenz metal angina. The angina that is caused by constriction and spasms of the coronary artery. To learn more about coronary arteries, see my cardiology playlist. Next, prostacyclin is anti-thrombosis. How come? I will cause vasodilation and I will prevent plated aggregation, making you less likely to clot. So that's it for prostaglandin I2 and thromboxane A2. For the pros, if you want to make thromboxane A2, talk to cyclooxygenase 1. But if you want to make prostacyclin, talk to cyclooxygenase 2. Next, prostaglandin H2 can give us prostaglandin D2 and prostaglandin E2. Prostaglandin E is for fever and pain. Ew, it hurts. Prostaglandin E2 can also give us prostaglandin F2 alpha. What are the cardinal signs of acute inflammation, please? Redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Aspirin and the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs tend to inhibit cyclooxygenase enzyme. And when we inhibit cyclooxygenase enzyme, say goodbye to prostaglandin G2 and H2 and prostaglandin E2. And say goodbye to thromboxane E2. And that's why aspirin is anti-platelets. 
analgesic, antipyretic, and anti-inflammatory. You can learn more about aspirin and the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs in my pharmacology playlist. Next, lipooxygenase enzyme is inhibited by xylutin, whereas the leukotriene receptor is antagonized by montelukast. And I've talked about them in my pulmonology playlist as well as in my pharmacology playlist. Next, why are corticosteroids considered to be potent anti-inflammatory medications? Because they inhibit the source. They inhibit phospholipase A2. Without phospholipase A2, there is no arachidonic acid, there is no prostaglandins, and there are no leukotrienes either. So, there is no pain, there is no fever, there is no inflammation, there is no swelling, there is no thrombosis, and there is no neutrophilic chemotaxis because leukotriene B4 is one of the recruiters of neutrophils. See my video on acute inflammation. If you want to be a great student, take a moment to pause the video and draw all of this with your own pencil. Bonus points if you can do it from memory without looking at the screen. And if you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionaries.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. As you know, glucocorticoids inhibit the phospholipase A, that's why they are anti-inflammatory, because if you take glucocorticoids, no prostaglandins, no leukotrienes, no pro-inflammatory mediators. Aspirin or non-steroidals inhibit cyclooxygenase, xylutin inhibits lipooxygenase, the montelukastin or any other leukasts are leukotriene receptor antagonists. Next, why does aspirin cause asthma exacerbation, otherwise known as aspirin? exacerbated respiratory disease. Well, if you understand pharmacology, there will be no mystery as to why. Aspirin does what? Aspirin inhibits cyclooxygenase. And when you inhibit cyclooxygenase, you're not going to make prostaglandins. Therefore, all of the arachidonic acid will have only one pathway left. So all of the arachidonic acid will be diverted to the leukotriene pathway, to the lipooxygenase pathway. Now you'll end up with lots and lots and lots of leukotrienes, including leukotriene C4, leukotriene D4, and leukotriene E4. All of them tend to cause bronchoconstriction, which makes the life of an asthma patient hell. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. So what are the functions of these prostaglandins? Okay, on smooth muscles, some of the prostaglandins will contract smooth muscles, others will relax smooth muscles. What are the ones that contract smooth, mu smooth muscles, including my blood vessels, uh, thromboxin E2? Yeah, it causes vasoconstriction, it increases platelet aggregation. What else? Prostaglandin F2 alpha and prostaglandin E2 at low concentration, because the same prostaglandin E2 at high concentration is relaxing smooth muscle, is causing vasodilation, bronchodilation, and it's decreasing uterine contractions. Prostaglandin D2 and the prostacycline are also trying to relax the vessel because this is prostacycline, it keeps the blood cycling. Functions of prostaglandins on platelets. Well, some of them cause platelet aggregation, others prevent platelet aggregation. All right, platelet aggregators are thromboxin E2, prostaglandin E2 at low concentration. Because at low concentration, you want to do two things. You want to increase platelet aggregation, and to help that, you better vasoconstrict. Because when you vasoconstrict, you're making it easier for the platelets to aggregate. You're also minimizing blood loss in case of bleeding. What are the anti-aggregators? You have prostaglandin I2, prostacycline, which keeps the blood cycling, prostaglandin D2, and prostaglandin E2 at high concentration. So the same doofuses that help the vessel relax are the same doofuses that help the platelets not aggregate. Prostaglandins on the stomach, they increase gastric motility, they increase the mucus secretion, not the HCL, no, 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 only the mucus, which protects you from the acid. They also increase the base, the bicarbonate secretion. And this is why prostaglandins are cytoprotectives. They protect the stomach. And the prostaglandins that protect the stomach are made by COX-1. In the brain, prostaglandin E is for fever and pain. Prostaglandins in your brain inhibit norepinephrine release from the sympathetic nervous system. They make you awake and they help you feel pain. So you're alert and you're in pain. That's how prostaglandin E2 rolls. Okay, in the eye, prostaglandin E and prostaglandin F decrease intraocular pressure. How? By increasing the outflow of the aqueous humor. Let's talk about prostaglandin analogs. Prostaglandin E1 analogs include misoprostol and prostadel. If you want mnemonics, write misoprostol like this. So this is E1 analog 
and I'll process it like this, also E1 analog. Prostaglandin E2 is di, no prostone, di2 and E, so E2 analog. Prostaglandin I2 is prostacyclin, which keeps the blood cycling, all right? Blood cycling, and the helmet is EPO, because epoprostenol. There is also eloprost and treprostenil, I, I, that are two I's, so I2. How about prostaglandin F2 alpha? You have latanoprost, two alphas here, travoprost, carboprost, bimatoprost, tafloprost. Who named these things? There is another mnemonic for carboprost because it reminds you of carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide has two. Let's talk about prostaglandin E1 analogs, mesoprostol and alprostadel. Why do we use them? We use them if you have an NSAID induced ulcer. Why do you have NSAIDs induced ulcer? Because you inhibit prostaglandins. So to counteract this, give me prostaglandins because they are cycloprotective. Prostaglandin E will keep the ductus arteriosus wide open. They can also help you if you have erectile dysfunction and these are supplanted by sildenafil. What are the side effects of prostaglandin E1 analogs? Diarrhea, contraindications, pregnancy, cause they cause termination. Prostaglandins are abortifacients. Let's say that mommy is in the hospital. She has eclampsia, for example, and we need to induce right now. We use a combo of mefipristone and mesoprostol. Mesoprostol is a prostaglandin E1 analog. Mefipristone is a progesterone inhibitor. Let's talk about the prostaglandin E2 analog. Dinoprostone. Why do you use it? It's oxytocic. It makes the uterus contract. And for this same reason, it's contraindicated in pregnancy. You can use it to induce labor because it's oxytocic. It increases uterine muscle contraction, induction, and if there is high data for mold because you want to induce, if there is eclampsy because you want to induce. How about prostaglandin F2 alpha, such as latanoprost? We use it for glaucoma. Why? It increases aqueous humor outflow. So the aqueous humor will be absorbed and the pressure inside the eye will go down. It will decrease intraocular pressure. Side effects of latanoprost include brown pigmentation of eyelashes and the iris. Think of latanoprost as a brown latte. Contraindications, pregnancy. How about prostaglandin I2 or prostacycline, which keeps the blood cycling, such as epoprostenol? We use this for pulmonary hypertension. Because in pulmonary hypertension, you hear a loud P2 heart sound. So when you hear a loud P2, give something that has P and P, P2, epoprostenol. Sildenafil will cause erection, but prostaglandin analogs can do the same, especially mesoprostol, which is E1 analog. Make sure to watch my video on interleukins because it was just epic. See my pathology playlist. Pause and review. These are your prostaglandin analogs. Respect them. You can learn more about histamine, leukotrienes, prostaglandin, cyclic AMP, serotonin, medications to treat asthma, medications to treat COPD, medications to treat peptic ulcer disease, migraine headache, and more. You can have access to all of this if you download my Utacoids pharmacology course on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com. If you value what I do, help me make more videos by supporting the channel, go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. There are more than 750 premium videos available on this channel if you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine, chemistry, math, and physics make perfect sense.